Today on the m M&M and Podcast, we're talking about the hottest new topic in three-rail O-scale Blue Nami DCC. What is it? And can it compete with Legacy and DCS? All this and more. So get your ticket from the station, grab a seat, and make sure you don't miss the train. All aboard. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to episode 66 of the m M&M Podcast I'm one of your hosts, Matt Rochford, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Matt and Johnny. How you guys doing tonight? Doing pretty good, man. It's been a while. Hello? Hello? You guys back? Johnny, are you there? Yeah, you guys locked me in last time. Where the hell have you been? Oh, I, for- I for- totally forgot about that. I'm sorry, Johnny. Dude, you, uh. you said, hey, go downstairs and grab the other extra microphones, and you never came back. Yeah, it happens. Dude, I've been living off of office supplies for the past like several months. You know what? We wanted to uh, we wanted to give you time to reflect on your life and your decisions. I just you just told me to get coffee, man. I- I'm sorry I got you decaf. <laughs> I didn't know it was that serious. You wanted a cup of coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Oh, I mean, I did give Matt Z like you know engine oil last time he wanted coffee. He's like, is that's uh, I guess I see why uh, he left me. I'm surprised I'm still going. Engine oil that that's a bit light for Matt Z. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> But it's 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 good to be back. Yeah, it's it, it is fantastic to be back. And you know what? We actually have some big announcements we'd like to make on the show tonight. So uh, you know, put your seatbelts on, folks, uh, because uh we got some doozies, but uh let me say that it's all positive things. It's all for the uh, you know, the the flow of the of the podcast. Uh, and we did this for good reasons, and uh, I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll enjoy the changes as well. So um, well, let's just start at the top, then, right? So first thing first, uh, I am exploring other scales. Um, I know for folks that are actually on the, um, or I should say, in the Discord, uh, I did make a couple of uh, comments on there, but uh, I am still staying in O scale. I'm enjoying O scale. Uh, so I don't want people to uh, freak out here. Uh, in fact, I just came back from York a couple weeks ago. So I had a great time there uh, hanging out with all the old skill buddies. And, uh, I'll, you know, I'm going to be using uh, my adventures and HO to kind of compare how all the other scales are, you know, advancing in the industry and how that compares with O scale. So, uh, you know, just a little uh, little HO insight for folks to kind of like mix in here. So I just want to make sure that pe- folks understand, too, this is not becoming, you know, an HO podcast. Uh, we were we were staying as an O-Scale podcast. We started as an O-Scale podcast. We're staying as an O-Scale podcast. Uh, but we would like to kind of, um, you know, take things in from all scales. Uh, you know, a lot of different topics are shared amongst the different scales. And I think it's important that we start blending a bit of that in uh because at the end of the day we want o scale to be the best it can be right now uh number two this also doesn't mean that i will be leaving the show in fact uh johnny and matt have glued me to my chair and have glued the mic to my shirt so i i cannot i cannot leave for anything so i'm basically stuck here no matter what you can't go anywhere you're stuck here (laughs) that's right can't even go to the john well, I, 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 we'll I'll figure we'll figure out a device for him. We won't discuss it on show. We'll figure out something. <laughs> Let's post show talk. Po- post show talk. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I make it through the show. Maybe to have a post show. We'll see. With that, we will also be widening widening our horizons here at the podcast, uh, and um, I'm super proud to announce that we will be la- relaunching uh, under a new name. Uh, we're keeping the M and M name. Okay. But we've decided to become the many mats podcast. Uh, we thought that was only fair. And uh, wait, just... hold up. I, I didn't agree. I, I like this. I, 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 oh. I, first you lock me in the office, <laughs> then you disappear for a couple months. And now you're made. Okay. I see how it is. I see. How it is. O- only mats can, can speak now on the podcast. Oh, I, I like what, you can't mute me. You can't. So again, uh, just uh, obviously joking around, but uh, uh, truthfully, we are relaunching uh, under a new name, uh, and that name is the Miniature Models Podcast. 
Okay. Uh, that change will be reflected uh, over the next few weeks on the server, uh, on the podcast title itself. Um, we are even, even having our logo uh, redone uh, to match the new uh, Miniature Models podcast. So this is really, really cool. It's a fantastic change. Um, you know, for all the folks that have listened to us from the start, from episode one, again, we thank you uh, for staying on this uh, in the podcast. And we're only doing this so we can make the podcast better for you. Um, I know there's been a big gap here uh, between our last episode. So thanks for, for you know, sticking through it. Uh, but, you know, I'm telling you right now, and I'm sure the guys here would agree that um, the podcast is going to be better for it. And, uh, you know, we hope you guys, uh, you know, stick with us as we kind of move along and uh, start kind of a, a new type of journey uh, through O-Scale. Uh, now, on the logo, uh, I just wanted to also say uh, that uh, that is being done by our friend Leia from Sleepy Time Junction. So keep an eye uh, out for that um, over the next few weeks. And, and of course, uh, with the new logo means uh, new merch rocking our new logo as well. Uh, last but not least, we've decided with so many new topics and ideas to cover that we might need some help in tackling them all. We racked our brains looking far and wide for someone we wanted to bring on board, and we couldn't think of anyone more fitting than our buddy, John, a.k.a. Retro Mikado 96. For longtime listeners, uh, you may remember John from previous episodes, and we're happy to have him back as a permanent host on the show. John, welcome to the show. We're super excited to have you with us. Thank you so much, guys. I am absolutely thrilled to be with you all. And uh, now we've got all the letters balanced out again. We got the two M's and the two J's. We brought balance to the force. We <laughs> I have backup now. I can't be bully anymore. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to the show, John. So happy to have you on with us, man. Guys, I am honestly so humbled that you asked me to be a part of this. I cannot wait to go on this journey with you all. I think the rebranding is fantastic. I can't wait to just go through this whole thing with you all and just see what kind of shenanigans we get up to. Yeah, welcome in, John. It'd be great to have you, man. No, thank you so much, guys. Seriously. Now, because of the topic tonight, uh, we needed to bring in some extra extra ammunition. Uh, and so we wanted to bring in our resident expert, uh, so we'd like to welcome back to the show, Sid from Sid Strains. Welcome back, Sid. Thanks for having me on, guys. I've, I've been on the show a few times now, and it's it's always a, a pleasure to be on. And I'm excited to talk about uh, the topic we've uh, decided to talk about this evening. And, uh, of course, I'd like to uh, congratulate John on uh, being a, a new host for the show. I'm I'm a content creator, and I, I always like seeing others... Uh, exploring the the world of of content creating and you know presenting is fun and john is a very good presenter and so with the rebrand and adding john i think you guys are going to have a a really good uh i guess new start or kind of extension uh to your uh your current setup oh man i'm glad that like honestly i'm so happy that you were the first you know guest back on with the rebrand and everything like i mean you know, one of my favorite people, you know, closest friends here in the hobby. It's absolutely fantastic. I couldn't think of a better person that we could have on. All right, folks. Well, let's continue on here. Uh, now, it's been a while since we've talked on the show. So I think it's only fitting that we uh, we continue our check in segment that we've been doing uh, over the last few years. <laughs> Did I say years? Last few months. I'm 84 <laughs> years old now, man. Yeah. No, it feels like day. it feels like years, right? <laughs> it's, been it's been 82 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can still smell the fresh paint. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, <laughs> let's go ahead and do a check in. Um, I'm, you know, obviously, uh, I'm going to let our guest, uh, Sid, check in first. So, Sid, uh, what's what what you been up to? I have been busy as always with, uh, you know, I always like to make YouTube videos and I've been trying to keep it up and I'm always working on trains for my friends, customers, and, and now even uh, some of my customers are actually some stores and so I'm just slowly um, picking up business and then 
Of course, I'm just enjoying this hobby. I've, I've purchased some new things recently. A lot of those things actually came from uh, York. Uh, um, a lot of us here were at the show uh, just a few weekends ago, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm definitely enjoying the hobby, and we're in the season. It's it's now uh, it's now becoming winter time, and so that's always the the season of model trains as we're all at home and we need something to to keep us uh, occupied and model trains are the way to do that fantastic uh and uh john as our uh new permanent host what you been up to well thanks guys um yeah so recently i mean a while back you know originally i used to be a um a traditional collector a post-war uh focused collector and um about two, three years ago, um, when I got introduced to all you great guys, I switched over to scale and I've been focusing on that the past couple of years. So um, actually just within the past couple of months, um, <clears throat> like Sid said, we just had York and everything. So I actually got back into doing a little bit of post where I, I reached out to some people and found some old pieces from my collection and just some kind of branching out and doing that again. And um, as always, I, I try to keep it focused. I do a tiny bit of G scale as well. So um, not really been doing much with that at the moment, but yeah, just kind of getting back into finding some old, fun parts of the hobby I used to partake in. And uh, yeah, just really enjoying all the new stuff and especially the new great thing we're going to be talking about this evening. Excellent. Uh, Matt, no, you know what? I'm going to actually pass it to Johnny. Yeah, the Johns go first. Um, thanks, Matt. Uh, we just got back from the York train show, as Sid and John mentioned. Uh, that was a long drive that Matt R and I took with some of our Shy Town boys, and we went out there, uh, browsed around the show, bought stuff. Uh, Sid assisted me in scoring some Black Widow F units from Vince at the show. Something I definitely have been wanting for such a long time, and I got it for a killer deal thanks to Vince and to Sid. So thank you to both of you guys. And uh, I picked up some other goodies, and we visited some train layouts of uh, some YouTubers that you guys may know. Um, probably will see that posted on YouTube if you haven't seen it already. So uh, lots of cool stuff, lots of fun. Uh, I'm broke, as always, because of trains. But hey, you know, just be the season to empty your wallet and buy more chugs. So good times. How about you, Matt Z? Uh, I mean, I, I unfortunately did not uh, go to York, but um, I... Uh... Definitely did not uh, not buy trains. I definitely bought uh, some trains. A uh, buddy on the Discord, he was uh, selling some trains for a buddy. He sold me a uh, New York Central Station Sounds Diner and then a bunch of Atlas Rolling Stock for really good prices. Uh, so that's but that was my purchases. And then from uh, Matt, I'm you know he's mentioned talking about you know uh, looking into HO and all that, and uh, so he's been selling us some of his O, oh, and I'm paying off a bunch of santa fe stuff so you'll be seeing that in the near future uh layout slowly but surely getting there and uh that's all i got for now but uh, you know what slowly slowly making progress on everything and there'll be more to come as always excellent matt and for myself so yes uh, i did travel to york a few weeks ago i had a blast uh, uh seeing uh, all my friends and hanging out with sid and you know the rest of the uh East Coast boys and girls. Uh, so uh, shout out to Peachy too. Uh, Peachy's train, Peachy from Peachy's Trains was there. So it was cool uh, actually meeting her in person for the first time. Uh, I did end up uh, leaving with a few uh, HO items. Uh, Santa Fe, of course. Um, but for those who want to know, I did stop by the Atlas booth. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, as everyone knows me, I'm into Metra. And, uh, of course, they <laughs> announced all this Metro stuff. Uh, so I do plan on uh, pre-ordering uh, definitely a good amount of Atlas Metro stuff uh, that they have coming out. So really, really excited for that. So, well, Matt, you, you, I mean, you, you told me one of the uh, one of the things you bought. What did you buy? What did I buy? Uh, well, I bought... Uh, some Santa Fe uh, F7 uh, yellow bonnets. Bought some uh, Blue Goose uh, passenger cars. And I'm trying to think of what else I got. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I'm old. Maybe, I don't remember maybe, what I did maybe yesterday. A certain, maybe a certain thing that goes with, hey, I'm walking here. The thing that this podcast apparently was founded on. 
Come on, man. Can't stand a word we have to censor constantly. It, it's, it, it's a sandwich chain. It's a runaway pasture car. I'm, I'm blanking, guys. I'm sorry. Subway? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Jeez. <laughs> Maybe it has been 82 oh, years. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it, oh. it is. I feel like I'm 82 years old. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, because they did, uh, MTH did not make CTA in HO form, uh, they did make, uh, obviously, New York subways in subway form. So I did end up buying, uh, getting the uh, R17s, I, I believe, in the brown scheme. Uh, I think it's the, you know, I'm going to get this wrong, but I think it's maybe like the North. Uh, I don't know. You'll have to help me here, Mansi. The North I, I, train. I'd have to, I'd have to I, look at the, I have to look at the number. That yeah. See, awesome. we do colors here and at CTA. We do colors. It's easy to remember. Like you guys have to do like directions that, that I'm all mixed up. already. <laughs> directions are confusing. I prefer colors. Yes. Yeah, the northbound South train. Uh, no. The northbound <laughs> south train that goes east. Right? <laughs> that one. We got we've got colors here too in DC, so we don't. Yeah. Oh, do no, you? Okay. Don't have to worry about that either. <laughs> uh, yeah. So otherwise, yeah, I came home with some really cool stuff, and uh, I'll be posting some pictures soon. And um, obviously, I'll plan on doing a video update um, <laughs> one of these days uh, for my YouTube channel. But uh, otherwise, yeah, just a, a really good time, and I've been having fun. Looking to expand your collection? Check out Trains.com. Trains is your go-to place for new and used model railroad products. They have everything ranging from engines, rolling stock, parts, track, and scenery. If you need it, they probably have it. With new discounts being added daily, you'll be sure to find something you like. Plus, Trains offers a newsletter which keeps you up to date on new items, discounts, and upcoming promotions. We've been using Trains for years and we highly recommend their stellar service. What's really cool is you can also collect points by buying trains and using them on future purchases. With their awesome rewards program, you can earn points on every purchase that you can use for future discounts. Dedicated modelers can also join their private car membership to get exclusive access to new listings, earn 5 points per dollar spent, and unlock great benefits like no questions asked returns. Trains not only sells trains, but also buys them too. If you've got a large collection or are interested in downsizing and making some cash, you can head on over to sellmytrains.com. It doesn't get easier than that. You can find them using our affiliate link, www.trains.com slash MMOP. Or if you want to use our one-time promo code MMOP, you can get $10 off a single purchase on the trains.com website. So check out trains.com and start expanding your collection today. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into the meat and potatoes uh, for tonight. Uh, the Again, the hot topic is three rail O scale DCC, uh, or more specifically, Blue Nami DCC, or we like to call it Johnny Blue Nami. Uh, <laughs> now, this has been something that uh, Johnny and Sid have been working really hard to promote. Um, if you have not, uh, there's been uh, videos already on this, and they've been pretty huge. Um, and uh, people are really excited for this. So I'm going to hand this over to them to explain why this is a big deal. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, this is definitely something that Sid and I have been kind of in our, our passion project for the past couple months. Uh, we I peer pressured Sid into trying this new tech with me, which is tech that's been released by Soundtracks. And it's super interesting, but before we, we go too in-depth into all the jargon and stuff like that, we'll kind of touch base on what DCC is. So, um, Sid, I'll, I'll throw it to you. What What is DCC, and uh, why does that matter to us here in OSCAL? So, DCC stands for Digital Command Control, and that was a control system standard that was standardized several years ago, not several, many years ago. It's actually been around for a very long time, longer than the control systems that are in um, three rail traditionally, like Lionel's TMCC Legacy and then MTH's DCS. And so, it was a standardized system that HO and S scale and G scale and lots of other scales use even two rail O scale uses it, but it was never standardized as something in the three rail market. And so 
what it really is is a is a power supply. DCC is a power supply and a control system all in one. Instead of just sending DC current to the track or AC, it sends a very high frequency AC, which has encoded messages in it that go through the rails, through these encoded messages of electricity, and then they go into the engine, and then those messages are then uh, received by the decoder board in the engine, and then the engine takes those and does something. So it takes those commands and goes forward, backwards, blows the horn, or or turns on a light, whatever it might be. And so, at the end of the day, DCC is a power supply and a control system in one, but because DCC is this very high frequency AC power source, it's very different from our traditional three rail system where we have AC power going to the tracks and then our control systems are kind of external to the, the power supply. Um, MTH's DCS does have it integrated into their system, but it's still just a signal that is going through the layout, kind of similar in a way to DCC, but DCS is still this AC-based system. It's not this very high-frequency system that DCC is. And so because of that difference, it was never something that was really standardized and introduced to 3-Rail because in the 90s, Lionel introduced TMCC, and then they introduced Legacy in the early 2000s, and then we've had DCS ever since the year 2000 when MTH came out with ProtoSound 2, and we've gone uh, through various versions of that, and then ProtoSound 3 now, and so that's kind of what it is and kind of why we don't have it is because it's just kind of this incompatibility. Granted, there are some some compatibilities, but it's not a universal thing. And so because there's not a universal compatibility between our AC powered layouts and DCC and combining those is kind of hard. We've never had it brought to the industry because Lionel MTH just don't see a reason to, you know, change and nobody else is going to create a system for engines that they aren't manufacturing because Lionel and MTH definitely take pride and definitely make their money off of producing products that have their kind of proprietary technology in them. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's, it's kind of a shame because DCC is really cool. It has a lot of different features and advantages over the existing systems we have, uh, such as legacy and DCS. And the fact that it's, it's also standardized also means that there's a lot of the nuances that we have to deal with versus one control system versus the other um, it isn't as big of an issue. Um, for example, any any DCC engine can be ran with any DCC controller, regardless of manufacturer, whether the, where we have a situation where legacy can't control DCS, but DCS can control TMCC, but not legacy fully, depending on the system. So it's, you know, you get to avoid some of those headaches. Um, but for, for an O-scale person, DCC is a little bit scary. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's one of the things that's, that's kind of interesting. Uh, Matt, R, and John, I think uh, you guys might have had some experience with DCC, right? Especially you, Matt, R, because you, you're exploring HO right now. I have, actually, and uh, it's been, it's definitely been an experience, um, I have to say, and, and I say that in a positive tone as well, uh, there is definitely a lot going on, um, and you can really go down a rabbit hole with DCC. Uh, I'm not going to obviously cover that tonight um, because we don't, <laughs> you know, we don't want to get super technical about this. Uh, but I will say as far as like from a customization standpoint, uh, it, it is very diverse. Um, you can really configure an engine to do almost whatever you want and there's different flavors obviously of of decoders out there uh so each one can be you know one there's some that can be really simple there's some that can be more advanced and by decoder i mean the board that goes into the into the engine that talks you know to the dcc signal and stuff like that they sound really great uh i, I was kind of blown away by uh all of the features uh, that you get out of DCC. Um, I was pretty much for the last several years really just kind of ignoring HO for the most part. Now, I do want to say that I actually started in HO. Uh, that was the first scale 
that I started in when I was young and I was in it for a good number of years. After that, I, I obviously, you know, went to O-Scale because of the the smoke and the lights and the sound and all the really cool features you can do. And I primarily, primarily didn't really focus anything on HO. And I think within the last year, I had started looking at, you know, all of the, all of the, the features and sounds and everything else you could do with HO. And I'm like, wow, this is, this has really come pretty far in the last several years with what you can do. And again, it just, it, it really surprised me. I mean, you can go in and, and uh, you know, set an engine to when it moves forward, it plays the, you know, the forward horn, if it goes backwards, it'll play the backwards, you know, the, the reverse horn, the three toots. Um, when it stops, it'll do like one short toot, uh, stuff like that. And you can configure that yourself uh, on the engine. So it'll, you can really customize everything to your liking. And again, um, you know, speaking of DCC versus legacy, I think the best analogy for this is when I look at legacy and DCS, I think of Apple, right? I think of iOS. It's easy to use. It's pretty powerful. Some of the customization isn't there because legacy and DCS want you to utilize what they determine is how you should run your trains okay when i look at dcc i think of android right powerful but very customizable right and you know for those that are i'm, I'm a techie so i'm kind of talking in a in technic you know kind of a technical forum here because i use both apple and you know android you know you can really customize everything how you want you can dive in as far as you want to go and then with you know legacy and dcs the features are there you can only do as much as you know lionel and mth are going to allow you to do uh, now there is an argument for you know well i can kind of create my own sound package and i can load up different sound files and that's fine uh but keep in mind that on with dcc you can have like up to hundreds of whistles and bells to choose from from on one engine like literally like choose them on the fly whereas dcs you know sure you could put your own whistle horn in there but you get to choose one and that's pretty much about it so again i, I don't want this to turn into like a bashing thing because it's not uh, i'm just being realistic with what you can do with the types of command systems out there and i'm just kind of giving you my thoughts from utilizing all three obviously i have a lot of experience with legacy uh, team cc dcs and now dcc now taking that dcc world and putting it into o scale is like for me like marrying some of the two best things in model railroading and again like johnny uh, and sid uh, will talk you know more in depth on that from what i've seen so far with dcc and o scale it is very, very impressive for sure. And it's only going to get better. Okay, well, first of all, freaking amazing analogy with that Apple Android thing. I'm jealous. I wish I had thought of that. That was a perfect description of the interfaces and just the general vibe of both of those systems. Um, I 100% agree. Um, the great thing, it's both, like you said, it's a blessing and a curse that we have um, the uh, the sort of proprietary control that we do with Lionel and MTH. They're fantastic with their systems. And there is a little bit of crossover, like with MTH, you can do the TCM and CC stuff. But for the most part, you you kind of have to just, you know, we accept that we run, you know, you have both systems. That's just what we do. And, you know, they play nice for the most part, you know, if you get everything set up right. But a little bit of history lesson on me, uh, way back before all of this, before I met any of you guys and before I got into scale and before I even really started collecting, um, O-Gage, uh, seriously, uh, in the very beginning of college, I was actually a member, the only local club we had here where I live, it was a very good club, but the only club we had um, that was, you know, had a you know, clubhouse that you could actually go to was um, the Northern Virginia Model Railroaders, um, which was a, a very cool place in an old train station near where I lived, and they were HO. Um, so... I got to learn HO. Uh, I had a few engines, you know, got some cars and everything. And they were, uh, 
they were DCC. So I got this kind of hands-on approach. I, you know, as a kid, I had had MTH trains growing up. I was an MTH kid. Um, I, I had DCS. I, that was one of my favorite Christmas presents I got was an MTH DCS system. So going from that system to then going to DCC was not too bad of a transition because it's kind of the same interface. You get that kind of green screen effect with the digital readout and the button interfaces are the same, but DCS was always kind of that, like, it didn't really hold your hand a whole lot. It was like, all right, we're mama bird and you, you're figuring this out. You know, you'll, it's kind of trial by fire. You know, you can read through this stuff, but it's definitely, it can be a little intimidating. I, I, I mean, that's the way I felt at least initially for sure. So, you know, it's kind of in O scale. We've always had this kind of thought is, oh, we have these. And then DCC is sort of the other. That's like, oh, that's, we don't go, you must never go there that kind of idea. So we now that we're getting this, where it's becoming a part of O scale, we're getting this kind of third option, this great, you know, you know, alternative that we can use now. And again, it's not that it's going to replace the other two systems or that the other two systems are bad, but it's diversity and diversity is always good. It's good for competition. It drives pro, you know, it drives product, it drives innovation and Everything I'm seeing from this system is innovation and building on the grounds of DCC, which is that great thing that it's so, the thing that's great about HO and the, the just DC scales in general with DCC, because you can use it in G scale, you can use it in N, it's all the same animal, just in different sizes. You can, that universality that you get, you can use any locomotive that is equipped with DCC, run it with your system, doesn't matter who manufactured it, if it's DCC, it will run with your system. That's the greatest thing about DCC, in my opinion, apart from the customization that you talked about, Matt, and that we'll go over more uh, in the evening. But just that universality where you don't have to worry about whether something's going to work right or not. That's the best thing about it. And the fact that we're starting to get that in O scale where we can take these locomotives and apply the best of both worlds in them, the best things about uh, DCC, the customization, that universality, and then blending them with the ruggedness of O scale and just kind of that, like the big sound you get out of it. That's the best thing that I think we're going to get out of this. And that's why I'm excited to see what we can do with it. Yeah, that's that's perfect, John. And, and both you, Matt, are and, and John made excellent points. Uh, DCC is fantastic. Uh, it, it is definitely very customiz- customizable and it's got so many options. And for those uh, listening at home who are thinking that's really cool, but I don't know if I have the the ability to navigate and configure something like that, or if I would learn all the the different configuration stuff behind it, I I get you. It would be scary, which is why, leading into our main topic for tonight, the newest product on the market, which has been released by Soundtracks, um, is Blue Nami. Um, For those who don't, don't know, Blue Nami is a combination of a Tsunami decoder by Soundtracks with a blue rail board from um, uh, make it with has Bluetooth technology, which is a Bluetooth DCC decoder. Um, we are familiar with Bluetooth technology in O scale. We have Line Chief, but this is Line Chief cranked up to the max in terms of it is a full command system within uh, a decoder that you can access everything, every single setting possible on your phone. And it's on an interface on your phone that is so user-friendly that anyone can figure it out. And I love that. Uh, the issues that Sid was mentioning earlier with DCC and O-Scale is that you can technically do it with an existing legacy and MTH layout, but it might not play well very because of how it transmits the signals and cause legacy engines to act kind of funky or TMCC engines to act kind of funky and have the audio be weird. Uh, Sid can obviously explain better that better than I can, but um, sending s- signals through the track is difficult through three scale, three O scale. So with the advantage of not having to rely on that and being able to send signals through the air via Bluetooth, it eliminates that issue entirely for one. And two, we have the full access to DCC and customization through Soundtracks' Tsunami decoders and be able to bring that to O scale and make it compatible with our legacy and DCS layouts. And that's what makes it super, super cool. Um, this is technology that is super new to the industry. In fact, I believe the Blue Rail, uh, Blue Nami has been around for a little bit, but the O scale version of Blue Nami came out around March of this year. 
So it is brand new tech and it's still being updated as we speak. In fact, I think a couple weeks ago, um, Soundtracks announced a brand new Blue Nami decoder for HO. So the tech is always improving, innovating constantly. In fact, I think one of the apps is still in, in beta testing. So there's so much innovation going on into it. And the fact that we have the ability to play with DCC for the first time uh, in O-Scale is absolutely fantastic. Um, kind of touching base on what John and Matt said in terms of the customization. Uh, in legacy, just for example, in terms of sounds with legacy, if you want to change your whistle, you either can't, if it's an early legacy engine or for the new legacy engines, you have five bells and five whistles, which if you aren't particular, then you find at least one that'll be close enough. But if you're super into accuracy and the engine being prototypical, you might not have any whistle that sounds right for you. So you either find one or you kind of just make do MTH is a little bit better. You can choose from their entire library of sounds. All you have to do is be tech savvy enough to load a file into your uh, engine from your computer, or you can ask somebody who does make custom sound files like folks in our Discord community who can build you a file like that. But again, it requires some level of tech savviness. With Bluenami, you eliminate both of those issues. If you want to change a whistle, it is quite literally a tap of a button on a smartphone app. And unlike Legacy, you have a bunch of sounds to choose from whistles alone you have 90 90 whistles and you're bound to find at least one that's close enough if you can't find it through a 90 then obviously you, you have a very specific engine but most likely you have something that you'll be able to find and you can change it within seconds um i've given the my phone to my uh, my girlfriend the other night she was running trains with me and she was just sitting there tapping through all the whistles and playing with all the whistles and it was done instantly uh, there's no need to settle for a sound file that you don't like. And there's no need to have to plug in your TIU to your computer and load a file for 20, 30 minutes. It's all instant. And that's what makes this super duper cool. And that's why folks in our Discord community and on YouTube and the hobby in general have been super impressed by this because not only does it give us access to a command control system that we've never had access to, but it makes it super user friendly. Anyone can figure it out. And it that makes all the changes instantly within maybe five minutes tops you can have an engine configured to be the most unique sounding thing in your o scale collection that you can't get from any other manufacturer it's fantastic want to support your favorite o scale podcast and rock some awesome merch well now you can we've teamed up with redbubble.com and have come up with a great selection of gear that you can get right now they have everything from shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, bags, you name it. Heck, you could even get a wall clock with us on it. All this great stuff and more at redbubble.com. Links are down in the show notes, so grab yourself some gear and rock some awesome podcast merch. All right. Well, uh, Blue Nami is super exciting new product, and the reaction we've got from our community, of course, uh, has been, you know, fantastic. Uh, so, from the comment sections of Johnny and Sid's videos, uh, there's obviously been a lot of interest for it. So, we thought we'd uh, let the community reach out and uh, we'd answer some of their uh, burning questions about Blue Nami. So, if Sid, Johnny, and Sid, if you guys are ready to go. I feel like we need like game show, like game show music. <laughs> Come on down! Come on down! Sid and Johnny, come on down to answer your blue Nami questions. Sid and Johnny, come on down! Come on down, I love you! Yeah, um, as Matt said, we asked our YouTube comment section and our Discord uh, some questions of what they want to know about Punami because it's obviously a new system, so people have a lot to ask. So um, I, I scrolled through our comment section and showed some of the most commonly asked questions. So uh, uh, I'm just going to throw out the first couple here. Uh, the one that everyone asks is how much does it cost to upgrade to Punami? And why is it so competitive in terms of the world of upgrades? Sid, did you want to tackle that? Sure. So how much does it cost? Well, in terms of three rail O scale blue Nami, there's two products that, that um, soundtracks has that can work in 
these larger models. The first being a smaller board, which is for little motorized units or smaller engines that don't draw a lot of current. When you're running your trains, they, they draw current from the motors. And so there's limitations to what the board can handle. So there's a smaller one and then there's a larger one. The larger one is more universal, has a higher rating for um, the current draw of the motor. And so that's the one that I've been personally using the most. Um, a lot of people who have been looking into this will know it's the 4408 Blue Nami decoder. That's going to probably become like a well-known name, kind of like a like a PS3 board or, or something like that. And so uh, the price ranges for just the decoder by itself um, from around $170 to $250-ish for the larger one. And... Obviously, if you look through Soundtracks' uh, website, you can find their dealers. Obviously, you can buy it directly from them, but like with any model train or just any kind of product in general, if you go to a dealer, you can definitely get a better a better deal. And so you might be able to get the larger decoder for maybe $220 or $200 and the, and the smaller one for maybe $150 or $140, something like that. And so... Uh, taking those prices uh, and kind of comparing them to the uh, kind of competition in the three rail market in terms of upgrade products, the upgrade products we have that are readily available to people are MTH's ProtoSound 3 upgrade kits, and those cost around $200 um, with shipping and tax are usually closer to $250. And then there is, of course, the Lionel TMCC products from Electric Railroad or ERR, as a lot of people know it. And man, oh man, they are slowly kind of uh, causing themselves uh, to kind of, they're kind of overpricing things. Um, and rightfully so, it's, it's because of the product being kind of obsolete. So to produce it and get the, and to get the parts for it, it costs them a lot of money. And so the parts alone, just to do the upgrade can cost $300, $400. And so that's almost the cost of like a nice MTH diesel or just a just an engine in general in 3 rail O scale. And so they're kind of pricing themselves out of the market. And so um, there is also the option of Lionel Legacy upgrades. That's more of a specialized upgrade that myself and a couple other people do. And that's a very expensive upgrade to do not only in terms of the uh, parts but also the labor to do that and so that's not really something i consider to be um kind of free for the public to do you kind of have to know what you're doing to do that and so uh, the ps3 and tmcc are the main options and so with them being 200 to 400 dollars basically ps3 is the closest comparison we have to blue nami in terms of cost and so if you're weighing the kind of pros and cons of both systems, in my opinion at this point, Blue Nami definitely gives you more custom uh, customization options, um, and it's it's definitely a user-friendly system. Obviously, if you like PS3, it is still very similar in cost, so by all means, feel free to install that in your trains. I still do it. I, I want I do want to mention... It's not like these other options are going away. We are just comparing those options to this new product because it is such an interesting and, and definitely uh, revolutionary uh, kind of product that is giving us another option. And so I just wanted to mention that this stuff isn't going away. We're just comparing it because we think this product is something that people should look into and invest in because we think it's worth it. So that's basically why, uh, how much it costs and really it's kind of competitive nature is that it's similar to a PS3 upgrade in terms of cost and also way cheaper than TMCC at this point, which TMCC is slowly becoming uh, from ERR kind of an obsolete product. Um, but if you really want it, it's still an option. It's just very expensive. Oh, a hundred percent. And another thing I want to point out too is uh, you know I am I am a big MTH diehard. I, I much like John. I I grew up on on Rail King and in MTH stuff, so I have my bias there. But um, part of the reason why I've personally moved to doing more Blue Nami upgrades than MTH PS3 upgrades is um, obviously this has kind of been remedied in the past couple months. But like take maybe like a year ago, if you wanted to upgrade anything to PS3, getting boards was super difficult. 
and you would have to basically find a donor engine to take the boards out of. Usually some poor Rail King 280 had to be sacrificed to the train gods in order for you to have new guts for it. And it, it originally it was pretty cheap, and then people started catching on. So they stopped being like $200 engines, and they became $400, $600 engines. And it, it made the upgrade cost significantly higher. Now with that boards and upgrade kits are back in stock, it's a little bit more reasonable. But obviously there's always that worry. You know, MTH is... DCS is a wonderful system, but it does have some areas of being, uh, some bits of being dated in certain regards. And like I said, with Blue Nami, since it's a brand new product and there's support for it and innovation still going for it, I, I like if I'm going to upgrade something, I want some longevity in it. Uh, so that's why I've been slowly moving to Blue Nami. Obviously, there's some things I've been keeping with DCS because I do still enjoy it, and there are some things it has advantages over, but. Um, that longevity of technology is definitely something to uh, to, uh, to keep in mind when, when considering maybe Bluenom is a potential upgrade. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I really didn't have a chance to uh, say much. I just kind of let you guys uh, talk and figure out, just interject somewhere in this. But uh, kind of going off of Johnny's point, you know, DCS and DCC kind of compare the two. And yeah, with DCC, your range of options is crazy different than anything with Legacy or PS3 even. I mean, you know, PS3, you know, we can do the custom sounds and stuff, but really, I mean, at the end of the day, you want custom everything. You go DCC, man. That's the way to do it. I personally don't have any engines with DCC quite yet, but uh, Sid and I talked about doing a couple, and uh, I definitely want to try as a sounds really cool based on all your videos and all that so i think it'll be uh really quite something so and the, as, like sid said the price is really good too comparable to ps3 so there you go yeah yeah the price is amazing and the stuff is readily available too which is great it being a new product and it's getting upgraded all the time so it can only go forward and upward from here which is fantastic I guess that brings me on to the next question, and I'll I'll throw this back at Sid once again because this goes hand in hand with the costs of of Blue Nami, but also um, since we're we're pushing very hard as an upgrade uh, or a potential upgrade for an engine, what what kind of engines, Sid, from our testing, would you say are are good candidates for for Blue Nami? Because we we've, we've done a couple, but some seem to be more deserving of a Blue Nami upgrade than others. What what's your your two cents on that? Based on what we have done so far, brass models are definitely a great candidate for this product. From the factory, pretty much all brass models at this point have pretty obsolete technology in them. They either came with Lionel TMCC of some sort, or they came with QSI, uh, like PS1 electronics, or just a reverse unit and no sounds. And so... In most cases, those systems don't provide a lot of great sounds. They're also very basic in their lighting options. And then lots of the time, unfortunately, they don't run very smoothly. Some of the more recent items that have the electric railroad crews in them do run pretty well, but stuff with the older Train America Studios um, engineer on board, EOB crews, and then some of the older boards that don't have crews, they don't run very well. And so you have this beautiful brass model but then it doesn't run well and so you're kind of disappointed and so lots of the times these models just sit on the shelf because well they're beautiful but they don't run well so what's the point of running a train if it, if it won't run well and so this system uh and control system that blue nami is brings a whole new kind of life to a to a brass model and it provides you fantastic sounds like everyone has been saying there's so many options for whistles, bells, chuffs, all these different sounds. There's more sounds with Blue Nami and DCC in general than you would have ever expected from something like MTH, PS3, or Legacy. They sound very good. MTH, PS3, and Legacy sound very good. But Blue Nami and DCC in general, in O scale, will be able to give you the Lionel quality of sound, that loud, bassy kind of tone and sound you get from a Lionel model and but then you have the accuracy 
of these real life recordings or just very good digital remakes of these sounds. And so there's that. You also have fantastic lighting. So many different lighting options for Mars lights, headlights, flickering, firebox. The list goes on. It's very long for steamers and diesels. There's tons of options as well. And then in terms of control, you have the same amazing speed control that you get from Electric Railroad TMCC. It's called back um, EMF driven speed control. And so there's no sensor on the motor. You just hook the motor up and it uses... Um, pulses from the motor basically um, to understand what is uh, uh, what is going on with the motor so that it can be smooth. Um, you can obviously turn that off if you need, but there's not really ever a need to turn it off. You'd want it to be on all the time so you have that consistent speed control up and down your grades and that you have very smooth control. I did some testing with Blue Nami and some of these engines and you can get a brass model Models that usually don't like to go very slow, you can get them to crawl almost as slow as a legacy model, which that is very impressive and that is very hard to do. Um, so it brings all of this amazing life to these brass models, but it's not just limited to brass. Brass is just a great example of stuff with older technology and older sounds that you might not be as desirable to a... Uh, to a modeler, but it does work in other models. You can put it into an MTH PS3, PS2, PS1 model that are die cast. Um, they all have the tether so you can run plenty of wires. You can also put it into like Williams by Bachman, you know, diesels or steamers. Um, Lionel stuff in terms of the more modern stuff, if you wanted to put it into the the uh, Lionel like TMCC engines with the IR tether or legacy engines with the IR tether. It's a little more uh, tricky because you have to find a way to get some wires uh, from the engine to the tender to hook things up. But the possibility is there, but I definitely think the main upgrade kind of driving point is if you have a brass model, this is a very good option. And so I definitely think I'm in the, the kind of, position where I want to push this as something for people to put into their Weaver, Third Rail, Right-of-Way, Williams Brass, all these brass companies. It's a very good option for that as it just brings this whole new life to these models. 100%. Um, Sid did a uh, did one of my engines, my South Pacific Mogul, which I've, I demoed on my channel in my most recent video. Uh, shameless plug there. But it's a beautiful brass engine by Third Rail. And as a person who models Southern Pacific, if you want accuracy and things for Southern Pacific engines outside of just your average GS, cab forward, tunnel motor, F unit, it, it's hard to find something like that. So when you, you model something like that and you need a specific type of model, it's a shame when they all sound like a, a New York Central Niagara. Don't get me wrong, I love that card and Matt and Z would kill me if I told you that I didn't like it. But it's a nice sound card, but once every single engine sounds the exact same, it's a bit frustrating, especially when you're trying to embrace accuracy. If you're paying for a brass engine for accuracy, but it doesn't have that sound to match it, it's kind of a shame. Um, as Sid mentioned, they kind of run a little eh, depending on when you get them, whether they be ERR or EOB, um, especially with EOB. Uh, there's times where I, there's, for example, I have a, a P10 that I barely run because I feel like because it has EOB, one day I'm going to run it, it's going to blow up on me. You know, I, I don't run it out of fear, but with Blue Nami, it gives that reliability that comes with it as well. It also irons out some of the issues that come with those uh, other uh, control systems. For example, one of the things that I just can't stand with old um, third rail engines is that motor whine. It just squeaks and squeals at slow speed, and it sounds horrid. And even if you have the sounds turned up, you can still hear it. It sounds like it's someone stuck a bunch of chicken bones on a garbage disposal. I, I just can't stand that. And with Blue Nami, it, it eliminates that completely. These things are, are super quiet. And when they're crawling you, and you have the sounds turned off, they don't make a sound. All you hear is the clicking of the wheels, and that's amazing. Um, board size, too. Uh, makes a great for third rail uh, models and brass models. You can fit them at they're a bit uh, they're a bit shorter compared to uh, a normal MTH stacker board or you know legacy board. Uh, I'm not 100 percent on how accurate that is. Obviously, they can chime in because I'm I'm more the the, the talky guy rather than the techie guy. 
Um, but yeah, it it helps with that, and it makes these engines go from shelf queens that are subpar runners to engines that you can whip out and show and run with confidence, which is fantastic. And the fact that you can have a reliable engine with fantastic sounds is great. You know, it's more than just oh, I have an accurate bell, or more than just an accurate whistle. You have so many different options. You can have an engine that looks fantastic, and you can have it have a cacophony of sounds when it takes off from the station. Uh, I've I've explained this to folks before when trying to promote Bluenami. It's imagine you're at the station and the steam engine is sitting right in front of you. It's hissing. The compressors are going, and um, you can hear just the brakes being released. The cylinder cocks get released and they're whooshing steam. The bell starts ringing. The engine starts chuffing. The the cylinder co- cylinder steam going in sync, and then you can press a button and the wheel slip starts going. The engine's struggling to grip to the rails and it finally gets its grip and it goes and it chuffs super hard because the throttle's cracked wide open. That kind of experience, that type of immersion, coupled with the engine of your jo- of your choice, if, especially if it's brass, you can't get better than that. Try to replicate that in MTH or uh, Lionel. You can't. I'll, I'll wait. You, you can't find one to do so. And even then, it's not in the same tier. Yeah, I think um, definitely echoing your comments with, uh, you know, the old school TMCC, you know, that Niagara card, as cool as that is, you know, like you said, you know, you buy a brass engine, you know, yeah, you got the looks. And I've often said this with brass, you know, you have the engine that looks the part, but when you turn it on, it either has nothing or yeah, it sounds like something it should not even remotely resemble. And in those days it was Niagara or Hudson. And if you got a SPGS, you don't want that. And So I think that, you know, like we were saying earlier with the sounds, you know, you put this in, the sky's the limit, basically, as far as sounds. You're not limited to, you know, here's five sound cards. Pick one that sounds semi-close-ish and just rock with it. You can't do that. With, uh, I said, with Blue Nami and DCC, you, you can do that all you want. You can eat your heart out. You know what I mean? So Cool stuff. And, you know. Like you're talking about the motor wine, especially on EOP, it's just awful. And John, I know you wanted to talk about that, so I'll hand it to you. Oh, yeah. I have a great experience with EOB weirdness. Um, first of all, I just, yeah, like echoing what you said about the, the you had two sound options, Niagara or Hudson. I'm a New York Central freak. I love both, but I, I don't wish to, you know, have my wonderful roads sound solid with your foreign power Ugh, being in your other engines but no it's it's and and as we know we always we always goof don't we uh how all heavy steam traction malays big engines all had hooters none had chime whistles they were all hooters and single chimes in that right i mean come on we know this to be a fact um <laughs> so the fact the clearly, fact, clearly it's just oh yeah mm-hmm. just woo. So the fact that we're getting some different stuff now, yeah, and like you said, with with your brass stuff, I mean, sometimes you just were buying what a, a, a almost a two thousand dollar shed decoration. It was just a beautiful engine that would just sit in your shed. It's like, well, I can't run that. It's gonna it's gonna you know look like crap running around my lead. It's gonna perform poorly and embarrass me. I went, I had an i five Hudson, a Weaver one, gorgeous, beautiful locomotive. But it has since moved on from my collection. I plan to get another one at some point. But um, it had some, it's, it's funniest trait. It was actually a pretty sturdy runner for being a brass engine. I was very impressed with it. I put that thing through its paces for sure. But um, the funniest thing was it ran better when it was fully loaded with a train. If you ran that thing light engine, it was hating life and letting you know every second that it was moving, that it did not enjoy how you were treating it. It would jerk and shake and just it was like you were you know it, it was just horrendous so knowing now in the future i'm going to be able to have an i5 with beautiful smooth performance and again another thing that i think we can you know all attest to being brass owners um is that because brass engines are not die cast obviously they're much lighter they perform way differently 
than die cast locomotives. And because of that, you kind of have to, you can't always be as heavy handed. Like every time that, you know, I would run since that thing had EOB, it was TMCC compatible. I would run it with my cab too. And you touch that thing's throttle, slip, 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 dig, dig, dig at the rails. And it, you know, having the fine motor control with DCC is going to be a game changer with brass. So now your trains will actually be able to handle your consists and you can get more realistic performance out of them. And if you do want to do wheel slip, that's an option too. You know, you might still get some realistic performance out of them. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. Right, I'm gonna move on to our next questions here. Now, I'm gonna kind of lump these three together because they're pretty similar here, and I'm actually gonna let uh, Sid, John, and Matt take these ones because you guys have played with it, and I'm curious what it, what uh, you guys think from both uh, a- a- experts' perspective and uh, a-, a newcomer's perspective. So, how easy is the Blue Nami app? Um, what advantages do you guys think it has over the Lion Chief app and the MTH apps? Um, is it good at range? I don't know we have Bluetooth control from Lion Chief, but obviously it's not very great. How does Bluenami's app um, compare? And um, is there iOS and Android versions? Is the app free? So for for those, I'll, I'll start with Sid, and then uh, Matt and Matt R and John. If you guys want to chime in afterwards too, we can we can do that. So yeah, the Bluenami app is is definitely something I think is very easy to use and very user friendly. It is not uh, it is not clunky by any means. The Lionel Lion Chief app is definitely something I think is great. It it allows you to run your Lionel Bluetooth equipped engines um, with your phone and access those Lion Chief features. However, once you try and use that on a legacy model that has Bluetooth, you notice it's kind of clunky. The speed control uh, capabilities are, are definitely limited. You don't have that 200 speed steps, that kind of incremental speed control. It's just this slider that goes up and down. The The buttons are very cartoon looking, I must say. And it's also at times kind of delayed because the Bluetooth they use is definitely interesting. I, I don't know all the specifications on it, but I think it's a bit older. Uh, granted, Lionel is coming out with their Base 3 and their Cab 3 app, so I think there are going to be some improvements to that. But comparing the current Lion Chief app to, to the Blue Nami app, Blue Nami app is, is very nice. Both the Android and the iOS version are very nice. There's There are some differences between them, and so you can kind of pick and choose what you like the most and use whichever app you uh, like the most. I definitely think the Blue Nami app is is more similar to something like the MTH app. I think the MTH app is is pretty good for what it is. It is obviously still limited by the capabilities of MTH DCS. And so the Blue Nami app has so much more because it's an entire control system on your phone. It's not a control system that is tied to your phone. It is the entire thing inside your phone communicating with these blue nami decoders in your engines and so it's really good the range is also very good you can go up to around 100 feet away from your model and it's still connected which is very impressive for bluetooth i'm not a uh, an it expert or any kind of uh, expert in that but i think that's pretty impressive and so yeah, it's it's a very very fun app to use, very user friendly, easy to understand, and the best thing about it is you don't have to pay for it. It's free on the App Store, both the Apple and uh, the Google App Store, and you just download it. You connect to an engine that is Blue Nami, and you're on your way. There's nothing else to it. I definitely think they did a very good job of creating an app to control this system. Yeah, I'm going to hit on uh, one thing you just you said before, Sid. So first of all, as somebody who's actually used the app and I had a chance to actually, you know, have Johnny actually hand me his phone and say, OK, here you go. See if you can figure it out. But um, on your on, on what you mentioned about the Lion Chief app, I agree 100 um, percent. It seems the Lion Chief app is is easy to use. But I feel that it was made for eight-year-olds. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Eight year old. And what I mean by that was it's made for little fingers, right? Uh, because it's not very precise. No. I think, I think you had said yeah. that. Um, and it, yet again, it seems like I'm using a kid's app to run thousand dollar engines. And I think yeah. running a thousand dollar engine, I think that deserves a lot more powerful app to have in my hand that I could possibly configure or at least have the throttle be a little bit more uh, precise and allow me to do things uh, a little bit more realistically than, you know, I put my finger up here. No, now I'm going from two miles per hour to a hundred miles per hour in <laughs> one second. So <laughs> uh, I've definitely made that mistake before in the Lion Chief app. So I'm not, I don't want to seem like I'm bashing the Lion Chief app, but it, but obviously it was definitely made for kids. And, th and that makes sense because obviously that was the targeted audience for it. But I do hope Lionel does come out with something that's a little bit more um, mature, maybe uh, like some alternative way uh, that folks can run stuff kind of like the old, um, I had a chance to run it on my layout, but I had the old, uh, I forgot what it was called. What was it? Uh, uh, Is it the, what I was it chief, it, which uh, it was called some, it was called, it was the old Lionel um, app. Oh, it was it, only on uh, Apple. The Lionel iCab. iCab. I that's yeah. it. iCab. I, I actually liked the iCab. It, it definitely needed a little bit of, a little bit of functionality work uh, with the throttle and stuff. But for the most part, I thought it was really powerful. Like you had access to like all of the legacy options on that. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was what I was really hoping for is that they would take iCab and kind of redesign it for you know today's standards. And I think that would make a, a really good kind of like remote app to use on your legacy engines. Um, uh, same thing with the DCS app. I think the DCS app is fine. It has some. Uh, again, some precision issues uh, with using the throttle and stuff like that, but f for the most part, it, it's it's serviceable for sure. Uh, now on to the Blue Nami app. Uh, when Johnny gave me this phone for the first time, it it was very very I could tell it was very very precise. Uh, it responded like very well. Um, it you know I said hey Johnny I want to change the whistle you know, and he said okay click here you click here. It's a nice long list. It actually tells you the whistle too. It, I mean, it'll. Some of the whistles are very descriptive, so you know, like you know, five chime Santa Fe. You know, it really kind of describes what you're picking. I thought that was really cool. But and there are different ways of using the throttle as well. There was a couple of different ways you can do it, and it's hard to explain it on here. Maybe Johnny can explain it a little bit better. But uh, you know, there's kind of like a more of a, a, gener a generic kind of throttle way, and then there's this this tapping method that allows you to like tap precision up and down to make those, you know, to make that real slow movement speed, which, you know, everyone knows like I like really slow locomotives. And I was able to get that out of the, uh, out of the engine that I was running. And again, I had a really fun time using the app. I thought it was, took me like 30 seconds and I was like, okay, yeah, I, I know how to use this now. It's, it's, it's very intuitive. And, uh, yeah, and it, it's probably only going to get better over time as well as they, you know, they make updates to it and stuff like that. A hundred percent. And kind of just piggybacking really quickly before I throw the mic over to John or, and Matt Z if he's interested. The the, the throttle modes that you get, uh, you you get, uh, I think it's at least two. I want to technically say three. Your default throttle on the iOS, you have it's very similar. Uh, it's you have your slider. And you also have the incremental control. The incremental control is if you tap anywhere on the throttle, it'll notch up one speed step at a time. On the iOS app, there's something called tactile throttle, which is if you, for if you, for example, if you're like an iOS user, um, if you like pressed your home button on your old iPhone and you felt that click the haptic on your smartphone, you can have that tactile throttle enabled. So every time you tap, your phone clicks. So you get, it's not, obviously you don't have a remote, but it tries to simulate that every button tap, you feel a click. So there's feedback with the, um, with the iOS, with the Android version, there's two versions. There's the standard throttle, but instead of your one tap on anywhere on the throttle, you have your plus and minus buttons, similar to the MTHDCS app. So your incremental speed control and your slider, or you have outdoor throttle mode. 
Um, Soundtracks was given feedback saying that a lot of people liked the incremental throttle control, but they didn't like that they had to look down and search for that plus and minus button when they're running their trains. You're running your trains. You want to look at your train, not your screen. So they introduced outdoor throttle mode, which is instead of small buttons, it's the throttle slider is divided into two big boxes on top, two big uh, vertical rectangles on top of each other. Um, and basically, if you tap anywhere on that rectangle, it, in- it increases speed by one on the upper one. On the bottom, you tap it on once or twice, it, in- it lowers it by one or two. If you tap, it's one speed step. If you swipe up or swipe down, it increases by three or decreases by three. Or if you just want it to stop, you just press and hold anywhere, and it stops. There's so many different control options for all the different types of operators out there, and you can configure it to your own personal liking. MTH doesn't have that many throttle options, and Lion Chief certainly doesn't have that many options. I don't know too much about the the base three. I know they just did a demo at the time of this recording, actually the, the night prior. I haven't had a chance to look through that. I know Sid has looked through it, but I don't know if they have incremental throttle control yet. Based on my observations of looking at their kind of demo slides... It doesn't look like they do, um, which if that is the case for anybody who's new and is getting it, the base three in the app, that's a little unfortunate, but maybe they can change it because, you know, it's an app. They can always change things and add things, but uh, it does not appear that uh, the app will have that in, and uh, Lionel did not mention that when they were talking about it. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, that's one of the places where Bloonami really shines. And it's so user-friendly that literally you can give it to anyone and they can figure it out. So it's pretty cool. Uh, John, you got a chance to play with it. What did you think? I can echo everything that's been said so far and uh, just say, yeah, the main thing I love about um, the interface and just the overall attitude that the app has is one of user-friendliness without talking down to you. Um, not that the Lion Chief app, again, is bad by any means. It's a great, fantastic, simple device. But the main thing that I was never a fan of, it's the way that you just kind of interface with it is kind of like you could tell they wanted it to be like a video game. You kind of have to hold, a lot of times you hold the phone sideways. You hold it in very much like a controller. And it just doesn't, it doesn't really feel natural at least to me it might for other people and again lionel was trying to make something that could be used by literally everybody um from people who you know they don't even really you know know what a train is to you know people who have you know hundreds of legacy engines and want to use it in you know on their friends layout so the thing that i like about the blue nami app over that is the fact that it's for starters, just i think thinking this isn't when don't when you open it up it gives you this beautiful like just kind of home resting screen of a warm firebox open on a steam engine. Doesn't it kind of have that like home screen? Yeah. I I love that. I absolutely love that. It's such, this is going to, this is going to be so sappy, but like, that's just, that's a nice thing to see when you open it up. Just that warm, like your engine is there hot waiting for you, ready to roll like that. Like you are, it's, it's, it's allowing you to, not just run your train, but, you know, have the train come alive in a way for you. And the app, like you both said, is so, it's user-friendly, but it's not simple. It's not simple in the sense that, you know, it's, it's very uh, thorough. It go you know, it's, it's intuitive, but it's very, you know, there's a lot to it. It's very verbose. Um, you know, I spent, I mean, I think I had you guys show me, you know, a couple different things about, um, you know, how to change the whistles and how to open the throttle and everything, but it's such a smooth performer. And for something that's only been around for a little bit, it feels very stable and high quality. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great interface. I really just like the, you can tell it was made by people that love trains for people that love trains. That's the main thing. Like it's for people who are serious about this, but also want to have fun, which is what O scale is all about. We want heavy, big industrial trains that we can also play with and have fun because of their natural weight, their wonderful sound, and their great running characteristics. So it embraces all of that and brings the great things that are great about DCC and meshes them together perfectly. 
So that's the main thing that I took away from using the app. I've only used it, I think, twice, maybe three times now. And every time I've been blown away by the amount of stuff you can do with it. Okay. So now that we've covered how awesome the app is, I, I have to bring up the thing that when Sid and I promote this product to other folks, the biggest question we get, and Sid, you've heard this asked a million times, do I have to use a phone to control Blue Nami? Can I use a DCS, like a DCC remote, or even my DCS and Legacy remote? You know, can I use NCE Power Cab or Digitrax to control it on my three rail OSG layout? And uh, are there options to use remotes for DCC and three rail OSG? So, in terms of Bluenami, Bluenami is a Bluetooth based decoder. So, it's mainly supposed to be used with, of course, your, your phone. You're going to control it mainly from your phone. That was the main objective. Um, however, it's still a Tsunami decoder. So if you have DCC power and control on your layout, you can control it with NCE, Digitrax, things like that. However, in 3RL O scale, that's not very common. And so... It's probably not going to be an option for you unless you decide to completely convert your layout to be powered off of DCC, which if that's the case, then yes, that is an option for your 3RL layout. However, most layouts don't have that, so I'm just going to kind of leave it there. It's kind of up to the user. However, the main option is Bluetooth using your phone. Currently, there is no Bluetooth remote in the industry to control this, so... In terms of using a Bluetooth-based device, it has to be a phone. If you want to use a remote, at the moment, it has to be a DCC system, and you need DCC power on your track. Um, there are options for DCC control with remotes that isn't DCC through the rails. There are other options. There's some radio-controlled systems, one of which is called Airwire. Another one is called... Um, Rail Pro, and both of those systems allow you to use different sounds and things like that. Um, some common uh, decoders in the market are things like Lock Sound from ESU, and then TCS Wow Sound, and then Rail Pro has its own kind of capabilities in terms of sounds, uh, as it is kind of its own system in general. It's kind of its own standalone. DCC style radio controlled system. Yeah, for sure. Um, with just kind of chiming in really quickly, Bluenami is more so just uh, an upgrade you can go and pu push in and just go for it. Like I said, you've got 90 whistles and a gazillion bells and a bunch of different chuffs, compressors brakes, couplers, what have you. So if you've got a generic engine or just an engine you're not super crazy about a specific sound file for, Bluenami is a way to go. Um, if you want something more specific, like Sid said, ESU, you can build custom sound files out the wazoo with that, but you'll need something like um, Blue Rail or uh, Airwire to get that to work. Or if you really want to go in depth with Rail Pro, which can build a custom sound file from the ground up, but it has its own little um, bits of you know funkiness that comes with it, Definitely something that you can uh, you can check out. Uh, in fact, one of the guys on OGR and on YouTube, uh, I think his, his name's Ron, uh, Ron045 on YouTube, goes into this a lot more in-depth than we probably will here today. Uh, he does Dead Rail, which is battery-powered O-scale, so he doesn't convert the power um, like we would have to do in this situation to use track power. But a lot of the, there's a lot of crossover between Dead Rail and what we're doing here and talking about today. So definitely, uh, definitely recommend checking him out if custom sound files is something that you're more interested in. But that also brings me to uh, my next point that I want to ask you, Sid. Does Blue Nami work with track power in 3 row OE scale out of the box? If I buy a Blue Nami decoder and I put it in my engine and I set it up, is there anything special I need to do? And if I want to learn how to, to do that, what resources can you recommend to learn how to install Bluenami? So the Bluenami decoders can be powered off of two things. DC, strictly DC power, or of course DCC, which in that case you're just going to be controlling them with a DCC system. However, DC is not what we use in 3RLO scale. We use AC power. And so if you want to put a 
Blue Nami equipped engine onto a AC powered three rail layout, you need to convert that AC power to DC power. And so you can do that by using a bridge rectifier and a capacitor to create filtered DC power. And you can also use something called a buck converter uh, to give you a more constant voltage at all times. Uh, if you're interested in looking at a upgrade of your own and you want to see how it's done and maybe try it for yourself, uh, check out my video on my channel on a, an install that I did into a brass engine with Blunami. I show the main steps to install the decoder, uh, convert the AC power to DC power, and then hook up some of the general lighting and kind of get your engine on the rails sounding great and running. And uh, you'll be on your way to having a very nice DCC equipped Blue Nami engine after watching my video. And of course, there's also soundtracks. Just check out soundtracks if you have any more detailed uh, kind of questions and things like that. They have plenty of resources. And of course, contact them directly as they are very open to talking with people. Um, I've talked with them and they are a great resource if you do not find what you need through my video or any kind of documentation. Yeah, the guys at Soundtracks are fantastic. Uh, they actually do videos, I think, uh, every couple of weeks uh, on Lunami or about their Soundtracks decoders uh, and their Tsunami decoders, which have a lot of overlap with Lunami. Again, it basically, their Soundtracks uh, Tsunami decoders just with Bluetooth functionality. So they're a fantastic resource. Not to mention that they respond to everything. Uh, quite literally, tonight, they were actually responding to all the questions left on Sid's video. <laughs> yes, they so. were. They were. It was kind of, it was kind of funny, but it was it was also good because they uh, the questions that I answered were kind of verified by the manufacturer, and that's you know a really cool thing. And it it just tells the people asking the questions that I I've. I've shown them something that's pretty accurate and then it's been verified and now they have the, the manufacturer backing the information that I'm trying to provide. Exactly. And plus do reach out to soundtracks if you're interested in something like this, because that means we get more awareness for this being used in three rail and who knows, maybe we can see soundtracks be able to make a three rail specific decoder uh, potentially for the market. That is, that doesn't require us to have to convert the power. So um, the more you guys promote this and the more that you showcase it, the more soundtracks sees that we're interested and potentially we could see them fully entering the three rail, three rail market. But yeah, super cool. And uh, I have a couple more fine, uh, fine detail questions about what goes into an upgrade, what's available. So we'll finish off with those before we wrap up here tonight. Um, but Sid, rapid fire questions here. One. Is there just one overall Blue Nami decoder? Or if I want to do steam and diesel and electric, there are different decoders? Two, can any engine and three rail be converted to uh, Blue Nami? Does the type of motor matter? And three, can I put smoke in it? Uh, what smoke options are available? In terms of the decoder types, uh, at the beginning of the show, I talked about how there's two different style of motor related uh options for decoders there's a a low current draw for the motor decoder a smaller decoder and then a larger one which is the more universal one i i say it has higher uh current ratings and so you can use in a lot more models and then yes there are different decoders for steam and then different types of diesel there's you know ge and then there's uh EMD and there's electrics. It just goes on and on. There's, there's several different decoders. And so, yes, there are different style decoders for different styles of engines and then different size of model uh, train motors. And so there's a wide variety and you can check all of those out uh, in the, the specifications on the Soundtracks website. In terms of what types of motors and engines these can be installed in, I will say in my video, I said that it needs to be a DC motor engine with like a can motor. That is not entirely true. The reason I said it needed to be a DC can motor is because nine times out of 10, a DC can motor will have a very low current draw, relatively speaking. So it should work with the decoder. Older post-war and pre-war models that have the old open frame AC motors are kind of inconsistent in the amount of current draw that they they uh, will have. And so 
some might be low, some might be high. And so it's not this universal, oh, this can go in into every post-war 736 Berkshire ever made. No, it's definitely a case-by-case basis. And so I'm kind of correcting myself in that, yes, it can be put into AC motor engines, but it is not a universal thing where you just assume that it'll work. You definitely have to look into how much current draw the AC motor will be um, will have based on the model you have. And then finally, the, what are the what are the smoke options and and uh, in DCC and Blue Nami specifically? Uh, there is the option for smoke. It is not a plug and play kind of system similar to MTH or or TMCC. There are some uh, small basic circuits that you have to build using some relays and uh, things like that to activate the smoke on and off based on one of the function outputs on the Balloonami decoder. And currently there is no way to sync a, a puff of smoke to the chuff on like a steam engine. Uh, that is due to the design of the Balloonami decoders and how they produce the sounds. And so to some, that's a bit of a kind of a, a uh, it, not really an issue, but something they might be looking for is that synchronization of the of the smoke and the sounds. Personally, I'm okay if it's just a constant fan-driven smoke um, because once you get to a certain speed step, you'd never see it anyway, uh, puffing anyway. But those are basically the options uh, for smoke. You can turn them on and off um, with a function output, but you do have to build a circuit. And uh, the same thing goes with couplers. You have to build yourself a small little circuit to power the, the electrocoupler uh, to activate the, the coil on the coupler. But yeah, that's pretty much the answer to all those questions. And just to, to tag on to what Sid said, in terms of the different decoders, uh, I know the diesel guys will crucify us if we don't mention this. Diesel decoders are split between the different types of prime movers and manufacturers. So if you have a particular manufacturer, you can definitely, uh, like EMD or Alco, you can choose one of those for the specific diesel so you have an accurate prime mover sound. I know some of the existing manufacturers in O-Scale don't necessarily pay attention to that. So if you hate your prime mover sounds in your diesels, Blue Nami might be for you. Uh, also, they have just as many horns in Blue Nami as they do steam engines, so you will definitely find one that will match for you there, just as well as Bells too. And then also when it comes to uh, types of engines to upgrade as well, I know we've had a huge focus on brass tonight and how it's the perfect thing for brass. It will work in your standard diecast models, MTH engines and uh, TMCC engines and older legacy engines. That's perfectly fine. In fact, I just took home a cab forward that Sid upgraded. It was originally MTH PS3 that he upgraded to uh, Blue Nami, and it's one of the engines I run the most on my layout currently. So it goes for... Uh, all manufacturers, including diecast, in regards to upgrades. So don't think this is only for for the guys who are as posh and spoiled enough to have brass. Guys with TMCC or or MTH engines that are are uh, diecast, much like we all have, um, will work just as well too. So just want to throw that in the the ring, so we can uh, make sure we aren't just preaching to the brass crowd here. It, it's for everybody, and it's a very very awesome. Enjoying this week's topic? You can join in on the conversation too on our community Discord server. We have a lot of different discussion channels ranging from showing off your collection, discussing the latest and greatest in the industry, a buy and sell forum, and even a voice channel you can hop on call and talk trains with us late into the night. We're a little over 300 strong and we'll love to have you join us too. Check out the invite link to our community Discord down in the show notes, read and acknowledge the rules, and introduce yourself and start chatting. We have a great team of moderators who make sure all are welcomed and respected. So what are you waiting for? Come on down and join us in on the fun, and let's talk some trains. All right, so those are all the questions that we've had so far from our community and from our comment section. There are a couple others we didn't touch upon. Um, we'll maybe do a more deep dive into questions about Bunami and DCC in a further episode, but for the sake of time, we're going to cut it short because right now Matt Z has fallen asleep in his uh, black coffee now, and he is blowing <laughs> bubbles, and I think he might drown in about two more minutes. Oh no, he is awake. There you go. He's yeah, awake. no, I'm, I'm here. Okay, good. I thought you had just fallen asleep and drowned in us, so I'm just glad, you know. But, uh, oh, there he goes again. Uh, <laughs> he it wasn't even full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i know your name is matzy but you can't nap on the show we talked about this 
But um, let's let's take it home here. And um, overall, I think Blunami is pretty cool, and I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, it's a great up, uh, upgrade candidate. I think it brings a lot of things to to light that we've been missing out in O scale that we definitely need. And for people who want to embrace customization or just improving older models, this is the way forward. I, I can't express how much I love it. It is quite literally my passion project. I've been promoting it as if I worked for soundtracks. I don't. I wish I did because they're great guys. Um, I'm not getting paid to say that. Um, now why do they call to- it Johnny Blue Nami? I, I was about to say, <laughs> but literally, I've been promoting this so hard with Sid that a guy at at the York train show just shouted Johnny blue. Nami. I remember that. <laughs> so it's just like, so That's even, hilarious. even some, see him over our buddies have been calling me that. So I, I guess, I guess it's, it's, it's my thing now. So, but Hey, for such a cool product, I, I couldn't ask for something better. So, but yeah, it's going to be really cool. And I, I can't wait to upgrade more engines and, and show it off on my channel. Um, but we'll go around and see what everybody thinks. So Sid, since you're my partner in crime, when it comes to blue Nami, what do you think, my man? I think, like you said, it is a great upgrade candidate. I, I want to bring up a a, a a kind of a statement about it in general. It is a great upgrade can, uh, product and candidate for our three-round models. I don't think it is going to be changing the from-the-factory industry. Lionel is not going to be installing someone else's system into their models. MTH isn't going to do this. I don't think third rail would even do this either. And of course Atlas wouldn't cause they do uh, MTH PS three now. So it's not going to change the, from the factory market. It might make those companies change some things and realize the, the capabilities of DCC, but uh, I don't think it's going to change that. What it is, is just a great upgrade product that you can put into your models to, to bring them to life to make them more fun for you, more user-friendly for you and other people to use. And I'm going to continue to promote it. I am uh, in school for engineering. I love technical-based circuitry. I'm going to try and push the limits with this product in terms of smoke features, lighting, uh, the sounds. Maybe I can do dual sounds or something. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to try and push uh, the limits with this system because that's what I like to do. I've done that with other systems in the past, and this is the new one, and I want to see if I can do it with this. And so I'm going to continue to push it. P- tons of people walked up to me uh, at York after I made my video telling me they love it, they want to try it, people asking me to do it for them. Uh, I think this is an amazing product, and I hope Soundtracks uh, picks up on this and possibly makes more three-rail-oriented products and or just listens to our feedback as well so that they can continue to develop this product and make it better and better. And hopefully this lasts for a very long time because I really like this product and I do not want to see it go away. For sure, for sure. Uh, Matt Z, uh, if you're not you know, drowning in your coffee there and munching on your black licorice, what do you think, man? No, I think uh, this is going to be really something. And, you know, kind of like what you guys were alluding to earlier, you know, I think it's going to be one of those things that, you know, may not be, you know, mainstream as far as, you know, manufacturers, you know, I don't think you'll see a manufacturer do this. But I think, like you said, upgrades and really pushing, you know, maybe the way I'll summarize this is it's almost like marrying every command system we've had, you know, we got, you know, DCC with all its cool things and you got legacy and MTH uh, DCS that do their own things. And you're kind of putting them all together is kind of the way I've been summarizing this and in my own mind, the way I think. So I think this is going to be really, really cool. I think it's definitely going to be a, a very welcomed addition to the command control family. And I think that we'll definitely see a lot of improvements on it. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see it kind of grow. And like I said, feedback from this and, you know, uh, real world examples will be really cool to see how the product gets changed and uh, is improved upon. So I'm really excited to see what it's all about. For sure. For sure. For sure. John, what do you think, my man? Oh, I mean, what can I say that hasn't been said before? Like I said, I'm, I'm just thrilled for the fact that we have something different now. Innovation is always fantastic. It drives progress. It drives, you know, 
everything we do. Competitiveness is always a good thing. And so I can't wait to see, like Sid said, he, you guys have been so great about being ambassadors for this product. The energy that you guys have, I mean, I can just hear in Sid's voice how excited he is about this. And you too, Johnny, and all of us, we're just really interested in seeing what can be done because, you know, we've had these systems for so long. It's great that we finally have a company that wants to um, give us something new. And again, what a great company too. Like you said, I mean, they're talking to everybody in their, um, in the comments and everything. They just seem to really understand kind of what we're looking for. And I think that they're actually listening to us um, as a good company should. And we are going to have our voices heard and see some really, really cool stuff down the road. I'm excited personally to have some of these things in my own engines. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what can be done with that. And yeah, I just love that we're getting some different stuff. That's the best thing we can possibly have in this hobby. And I love that we're seeing that sentiment echoed all across um, social media and in person. So I'm, I'm a hundred percent for this. I cannot wait. For sure. And last but not least, Matt R, what are your thoughts and take us home? Run. Get away from it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to say this. Nobody ever said, I wish I had less options. This gives you an alternative command system to choose from that has a plethora of sounds and features that are really easy to use. Okay. Uh, and number two, this requires no change on your current layout at all right? DCS, you need a TIU. Legacy Team CC, you need a command base. Got to buy all these things. DCC, you install an app on your phone. Like, it's that easy. Um, again, I'm going to go back to what I said first. Tons of options. Like, this gives you an option. You don't have to run out. You don't have to, like, invest a lot of money into this. If you want to try it out, pick an older engine something you have that you've had for a while that maybe you've been thinking about hey maybe i should get this upgraded you know it's kind of seen better days and um you know maybe i wanted to get some new sounds in there you know everyone has an engine like that in your collection right that you might want to think about like yeah this is probably a good candidate for to get an update one day you know to get an upgrade and now's the time you know now you have a chance to try something new get something new installed and try it out again Nobody's asking this episode is not to try to make people convert over to DCC. That's not what this episode was about. This episode was to discuss more options available to folks in O scale to make running trains easier and more fun. Cause at the end of the day, that's what it's all about having more fun. So I hope people take that uh, as you wish. Uh, but for me, I think it's really, really cool, and I'm definitely going to um, pick an engine uh, to get, uh, you know, DCC installed. And I, I already know which one uh, I'm going to do, uh, but I'll keep that a secret. So, uh, Well, again, thanks. Uh, thanks to everybody for listening uh, to our episode. We're glad to be back and obviously look forward to more uh, episodes uh, coming out very soon uh, with uh, obviously... Uh, lots of really cool topics, uh, new interviews coming down the road, and uh, just a, a whole lot of good stuff. Um, and with, so with that said, uh, Sid, uh, where can people find you on social media? You can find me on YouTube. My YouTube channel name is Sid's Trains. You can also find me on Instagram. My Instagram name is Sydney's Trains. And feel free to message me on the various platforms. I have my email out there. I'm also, of course, on Instagram and I'm on Discord. So feel free to contact me if you're, you have any questions about uh, the technical side of model rarity or if you would like me to do some work for you, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to talk with you. John, how about yourself? Thank you so much, guys. You can find me on Instagram at RetroMikado96 and also on YouTube at RetroMikado. I've actually been posting quite a few videos recently. If you want to go check those out, you can DM me on Instagram if you just want to chat and check out most of my stuff. That's where I mainly post. And I'm also on Discord, so if you find me in the M&M Discord server, you can just see me under Retro Mikado or John S, 
and just stop by and say hi. I'm always hanging around doing something. Johnny Blue Nami, where can people find you? <laughs> You can find me on YouTube as Audemus, that's A-U-D-A-M-U-S. I have recently made a video about Blue Nami, uh, talking about the pros and cons in a much more condensed form. Also, you can also watch the video to see what Blue Nami sounds like. There's a lot of talk tonight, but if you want to know how good the sounds are, check out my video. You can see my little mogul chugging along the tracks. I know, I made a video. Crazy. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at Autumnus underscore trains, where I'm posting a bunch of shots of the layout. So if you want to see how much it's progressed and see what a full Southern Pacific layout looks like, check me out there. I'm also at uh, Facebook of the same name as well. You can also find me on the m and uh, Discord as well, where I am usually uh, hanging out in the voice chats or nursing my SP addiction in the text chats. So if you think that's fun, come on down. It's a complete blast. Uh, Matt Z, where can we find you, buddy? You know, John, when when you were uh, doing your social media plug, you ever, you ever watch Ben Eller, the guitar YouTube channel? I can't say I do, honestly. Uh, maybe I should. Bro, you sounded exactly like him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Intellectual property. I'm suing. Uh, Matt Z just... <laughs> also, also we, Johnny has created a new t- a new thing called a pod disc. I, I would love to, I'd love to know more about that. Okay, you, you go, Matt Z. It's an after bean drop. I prefer the pod saucer myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready? All right. Here we go. So you can find me on YouTube under Matt Dash Train Lover 9943. You can also find me on uh, Facebook under the same name. Instagram is Matt's.Hoppies. And like all the other guys said, I'm always on the uh, Eminem Discord uh, chatting, sitting in the voice chat, you know, having a good old time. So like all. Like they all said, come on down. It's a fun time. All righty. And you can find me on YouTube at WC Monterey Road, Facebook, WC Monterey Road, Instagram. You guessed it, WC Monterey Road. And I'm also, I just joined Pod Disc as WC Monterey Road. So, thanks, every, uh, thanks everybody for, uh, for joining the uh, episode tonight, for listening. Uh, again, um, we appreciate if you guys have any questions about anything we talked about tonight, uh, please feel free to uh, join the Eminem uh, Discord server. Uh, where we uh, basically post our episode as well and and allow people to chime in and give us feedback on it. But again, uh, we wouldn't be doing this without uh, you listeners out there. We we record these episodes because um, we love uh, O-Scale Model Railroading uh, and uh, we appreciate your ears and uh, all of the feedback and comments you give to us. So thanks, everybody, and uh, have a wonderful night. Good night, everyone. Take care, everybody. Take it easy. Um, I have my email and you can also just DM me on Instagram if you would like. And I'm of course on the, oops, what the, okay. Something just fell on my workbench. Let's redo that.